Chiefs do in, in their first ever NFL game? Uh, Luciano, Bill Manning, and Joey Fisher. Um, they, they all had, you know, first game issues. They didn't, they didn't play as well as they could have. There were some mental errors. There were some physical breakdowns. Uh, Elm is really, the, of the three guys, Elm's really played very well this camp and in the preseason game. We look at him and, you know, he's not tall. I mean, looks like a guard and, and he's been playing left tackle. Is that just a, a numbers issue that you're, you're short on tackle? Yeah, so what, what happened post, I'm sorry to cut you, I'm sorry. Post draft, uh, what happens when you, we would go, go to the undrafted? You know, we're going looking to see who we're going to try and size undrafted free agents, and it was it was interesting because we needed a tackle, and we were looking at the tackle list and we're like, gosh, these guys. I mean, it was thin. It was really thin. And then Ilm just stood out. He played tackle in college, and he's a really really good player. And we everybody projected him to guard, and uh, we said, you know, most of the time those guys. They're on the third team. They end up playing in the fourth quarter of the games, and they're playing against kind of the same guys they played against in college. It's not like they're starting yet or in a position where they're playing. So let's just let them play it out. If he can't do it, we'll juggle the you know shuffle the deck a little bit and move him around. And uh, so he's he's done that. I don't I don't know that his long term career is a tackle, uh, but he's played very well there. And you're you're right. He doesn't quite fit the prototype, but uh, he's done a good job this preseason. Yes, uh, I thought Manning be, be, speaks pretty bad in that one on one. I like the kick step from Manning. What, what do you see from Manning at, at guard, though, or at center? Can he well, he's, got, he's got really good bend, flexibility, balance, things that you need inside. He's got good quickness. Uh, you know, he's, he, he'll have to learn uh, the adjust. It's quicker. Things happen. The steps have to be shorter. Uh, Burford goes through it a little bit still. He still sometimes kicks bigger like a tackle uh, and needs to keep his feet underneath him a little more under control like a guard. So there's just, it's more of a quickness. And it's, I don't say quickness. It's more of just your footwork has to be Everything has to happen a little bit quicker at guard, and that's what Ilm will have to learn if he ever makes that transition in. Where, where do you stand with Matt Pryor? It, it seems like he's obviously pretty comfortable as a, as a pass blocker, but you know he's not the typical sort of tackle you'd look for in your run game. Where, where do you sort of view him right now? Well, that's uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, something caught something the other day. Um, you know, he's doing a great job protection-wise. You're right. In the run game, he's not a prototypical guy. But I think over the course of time, what I've found out is even though it's not exactly what this offense usually has for a tackle guard center, if you just keep drilling it, you just keep working on it, you just keep doing it, they keep working on keeping their weight, working on their quickness, and eventually you can find a middle ground. Yeah, is he, is he ever going to be, you know, the, the, the typical tackle in this offense? No, but but shoot, play, being able to play on third down and, to, and just being functional enough on first and second down as a run blocker can be good enough. You know, that third down piece of pass protection is a big piece. That that If you can't play on third down, you can't play as an offensive lineman in the NFL. So having that down, you can work back and say, well, we can just keep doing this. I, I've coached a few few different times in my career where you just you come to a new, new place and you have two or three guys, they really can't do the things you ask them to do. But if you just keep doing it, you believe in it, you give them reps in the games, reps in practice, they can be good enough. I'm not sure he's obviously coming from Division two. Yeah, he played offensive line all that much um, before he got here. You talked about this is a pretty big leap. How has he handled it? It's he's been a big leap for him. It's been uh, he, he's the last I'd say the last two weeks he's really started to some things have improved, but there was a long stretch there where just it was it was really hard for him. Uh, it is big, it is faster, it's a lot of it's different. And I'll say I'll say almost more than I won't say more than that, but almost more than that is the fundamentals that he was coached not bad fundamentals, they're just different. And so he developed whatever habits he had and the length of time he's played the position, those habits are hard to break right now. And so he's constantly, you know, maybe in practice, but when he gets in the game, reverts back. That was a lot of what happened the other day, man. It was like a lot of reverting back with the young guys to the way that always plays. Things we've worked on, things that we said we were going to try and get better at. All of a sudden, everybody just got in the, in the bright lights. And it was a, you know, great environment there. It, was a, it, was a, it felt like an NFL game, a regular season NFL game for so many of those guys. And, and I think they kind of, boop, reverted back and, and didn't quite stick with their fundamentals. And that's, that right now, Joey, that's, he's that back and forth every day. But he has made progress these last couple of weeks. Saturday, so they don't revert back again. Well, I, I can't. You know, we just keep doing it, and you just hope with the number of reps. As I've said, you know, the, the game, the game reps are worth so much, and unless you take practice reps onto the, onto game day, it, it won't go away. You have to trust and try and do the things that we ask you to do on game day. And then those reps become the real reps. I mean, you can you can bank some good reps in practice, but it's just not the full speed competitive 
when, when, when everything's going on and it's truly, truly full speed. Those full speed reps, that's where you've got to just trust it. That's what's great about preseason is win-loss doesn't count. So you can practice those things. That's why I love one-on-one -on -one pass rush. I think too much weight is placed on the win-loss of the one-on-one -on -one pass rush drill that we talked about the other day. That's the, another full speed rep. Because team periods, there's always that, they're geared back just a little so we don't end up with pileups, there's no tackling. But that one-on-one -on -one pass rush, man, that's a time to try things because those reps become a little more valid than the, uh, than the reps they'll, they'll have, say, in, in, a re in the regular part of practice. Or is that what makes the difference between a guy that's going to make it and a guy that's not? Well, you 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 you, you try to tell them, you know, hey, listen, dude, you got to do it. You got to let it go, and it's hard because they want to they want to pr be productive. And, and I would tell kids all, yeah, you know, one thing, a little small thing. Let's say in pass protection, he's continually wrapping a hand, and 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 it's causing him problems. And, and if I don't break, if we don't, if you don't break this habit here in this first year or so, it'll be there your whole career, and it will be a flaw, and it'll be something that that people will take advantage of over time. Uh, maybe some guys can play like that their whole career and be successful. I think you're always going to have a little, a little bit. I mean, I, like I say, I always refer back to Trent because I've been with Trent so long. And there's still things. He came in the other day that that's just there's little things that you realize. If I don't correct this now, and he knows, he says something doesn't feel right. We looked at it, and then all of a sudden it's it's this, just a little thing. And if he fixes it, it doesn't become a problem. But if if we don't say something about it now, shoot, by week eight it could become a real problem and harder to change for a young guy that's compounded, you know, a bunch. Chris, there was a rep yesterday in practice where Beal, I think it was 11 on 11, Beal just beat Trent. And I'm just kind of wondering, you study all these reps. I know you're watching your own guys, but what do you think of Beal? Uh, yeah, he's, he's been a good player. Obviously, he hasn't been out there a lot with injuries and everything. So, <coughs> excuse me. He's uh, he's really doing a, a done a nice job from what I've seen. I haven't paid much attention uh, to him. It's been the last couple of days he's been out there. You do notice he's out there, uh, but I, yeah, he's a good player. And I, like I said, I do not enough on tape for me to – so, oh, wow, he's really jumping off the screen. But he's definitely a talented guy. So, last week, that, um, you know, a lot of guys at his level, they're like, if I'm not who I am, you know, once I'm diminished, I'm done. I'm not going to be this developing guy. But he said, you know, if he was just, uh, you know, maybe an above average kind of left tackle, he still wants to play and play and play. And he has a goal for him. Does that speak to his passion for this? Um, you know, his desire to, you know, even if he's diminished Trent Williams, to, to still stay out there. Yeah, uh, we'll see if that ever happens. But uh, but he, uh, I was with um, uh, Jonathan Ogden in Baltimore when his last year, and due to an injury to his foot, toe injury, I think it was, he, he ended up, and I think I wasn't there when he had the final conversations with Harbaugh. We, we'd been let go and, to, and decided not to play any longer, you know, and I think that was part of the, I don't think he wanted to do that. I think it was if he couldn't play. Now, there were times Jonathan would say, you know, Jonathan might have had a sore shoulder, and he'd say to me, he goes, you know, he, I'd be like, hey, man, can you go today? He's like, eh, you know, I'm playing against this guy. I can play this guy at 70 to 75%. Now, if it would have been Freeney, uh, Dwight Freeney from the from the Colts, I don't think he could have played at that 70 He would probably have said, I, I can't, I will hurt the team at 75% going against this guy. Whereas, you know, some other guys, it wasn't that way. Uh, I do know this, and this isn't talking about Jonathan, now back to Trent. Trent does, the one thing, I, there were some questions on Trent coming out of college. Some, you know, did he love the game as much? He didn't, he didn't the weight room wasn't, uh, he wasn't a real fan of the weight room in Oklahoma. There was a lot of things going on then. But uh, when I met Trent, this guy loved football. I mean, he loves playing football. He, like I've told you before, he's a student of the game. He's a football junkie, man. He knows everything about all the players in the league. Um, he loves the game of football, and that's why I think for him, Doing that will be, will be you know he'll he'll definitely I, I could see that happening with him playing that long. I also think that he, uh, you know, when you do diminish because I have seen guys diminish, sometimes you change your philosophy on that. You're like, yeah, I'm not the dominant player I used to be. Can I still stand getting beat two or three times a game and 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 all that? I, you won't know till you get there. But I do think that his passion, his love, his commitment, to the things he has to the game are just are just unbelievable. And by the way, you know, he's one of those guys, Trent. Whether he goes to the weight room or not, it's going to be the strongest guy in the weight room. That's why the weight room was kind of like not the most important thing, though. He had other things that, that, that he knew he needed more, more than that. Does he ever beat you to the punch in terms of, look, i got to work on this before you can even tell him? Oh, Trent, always. He's got thoughts and ideas that are well, because I've got 14 other, 13 other, 12 other, whatever it is, guys to look at. And Trent's usually not one of your problems. But I did learn early in my career that, you know, 
a lot, a lot of people teach that you coach to the lowest common denominator in the room. And I was fortunate first, a lot of early in my career, I wasn't the line coach. I was an assistant or something like that. I sat and I watched coaches do that. And I also sat next to some very, very good players who weren't getting anything out of the meeting. So, so I've learned you have to, you have to, yes, you have to coach the lowest common, but you really coach the highest common. You have to, I have to coach every meeting for Trent Williams. And in that process, I have to work with the other guys if I need extra time for the other guys. So I'm always challenged to, I'm always trying to keep things interesting for Trent, for, for the veteran players in the room, while still being able to reach out to the younger guys. Trent's always, I mean, all these guys, if they're really on it, they're probably, I want to say a half step ahead of me. They might be more than that, but uh, to have to admit it, they, they study themselves. I'm, you know, we get stuck on, we look at scheme. We're looking at the other players. We're looking at the defense. We're looking. There's so much that we look at. Sometimes the player himself can come to you first. A lot of them can't. I say, Coach, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Trent's, Trent's really good at that. Although sometimes, you know, it's the other way around. I'm able to, to point some things out to him. This is a, an objectively silly question, but uh, a couple of years ago you tried for a, for a touchdown for Trent. Do you, have, do you have any hopes of maybe getting him a touchdown? I, I yeah. sure hope so. I love every day. He is so much fun to work with and such a great guy, and he sure would be great for him to end his career with a touchdown. It's just really hard. It's kind of like a big red flag. Hey, 71 reporting at tight end. Okay, let's be sure we cover him, right? Because, you know, that's that's the hard one. Uh, I go back to Ogden. He did in one of his early years in his career, caught a touchdown pass. Uh, and it was he, we always talked about it. I mean, shoot, it was 10 years after the fact, and we always talked about it. I hope with Trent that happens. You guys are looking at some outside tackles. When they ask you for your opinion, how many plays you need to watch of a guy before, and what do you go to? You go to last year's tape? You go to his highlight reel? How much film do you need to watch on some of these guys to decide, yeah, you know, I like this guy or I don't like that guy? Um, you're talking about like tryout guys at this time of year. Yeah, usually we just, it's the tryout, and then we, if there's film, they'll, they'll put together a tape that will have the highs, highlights and lowlights you can kind of evaluate. Um, I think it, it all depends on the spot. You know, you're talking about a guy that's going to be a third or fourth or fifth. You know, it just depends on, on who they are and uh, and what what spots you're looking. If you're <coughs> looking for a practice squad player versus a guy that might be a rotational player, you might have to dig a little deeper. Um, but a lot of times, you can kind of see what a guy is, and he's kind of built his. We have a grade on him. We probably evaluate him before in free agency. You might take a quick peek again to make sure everything looks the same. But it's usually some form of a highlight reel, not quite as extensive as you do in free agency or the college. And then you, and then you bring them here for the workout, and you see if they're still moving around, physical things like that. Is it important for the, to your, your way of thinking, for the first offensive line unit to get snaps before this preseason over in a game? Yeah, that's, that's a great. I, 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 it's a tough question. You know, I don't know what the number of reps is. Um, been on both sides of the coin with that, as far as what happens when guys play and don't play. Um, I do think the game reps are important. I, I won't use offensive line because I. I it is, it is important they play together, but they get a lot of reps together. We're together a lot, and they play a lot of reps together you know, in, in, in practice and things. Um, I do know this, that some players I've been with in the past, if they didn't get the real live reps, like ball hand, the guys that handle the football, like all of a sudden it's a lot different when they're punching at that ball in the first couple games of the year that you have to adjust to it than it is later in the year, you know, or as it is if you don't, if you don't have those reps in, in training camp or practice, right? Um, the only thing I do know also is that I, the most tired I've ever seen NFL players, and I'll talk about the offensive line, is when they come off the field after that first eight or ten play drive in the first game of the year, they are flat gassed no matter how many games you played in the preseason or how many plays you didn't play in the preseason because it's the first real time that you truly exerted everything, straining from the, you know snap to whistle, every single play trying to win, and they just haven't done that enough. As hard as practice is, even as the preseason games are, it's just, because I've been places where we've played guys as many as 100 plays in the preseason, other places where they haven't played any plays, but either way, when they walk off that field after those first couple series, they're gassed, and it takes a game or two, I don't know how many it is, but to start to get in game shape, the real game shape where you're playing full speed, full strain, and for us, like a, a receiver, you know, he, he can run. They run, they run, they run, they run, they run, they run. Well, you get him enough runs, and it's like, okay, I'm in shape. But an offensive lineman is, you know, in defensive lineman, you're shoving it full, you know, strain, strain. It's not just the cardio. It's the strain that goes on with it. And that's like, it, that takes a lot out of you. And it's not the strain in uh, team run, the strain in preseason two versus the strain in Pittsburgh on the road, right? Opening day with the noise and the atmosphere and the juices, uh, night and day. And so that's why, yes, it's important, but I always, I 
it's, it's cautionary. Yeah, kind of important. You know, it is nice to get guys some some reps. And our our, our sports science guys, they'll they'll tell you there's a number in there that they think they should play. I don't know what it is. But. Thanks, coach. Okay. Thank you, guys.